Hello, Star Citizens. Welcome to Review Every Ship by CitizenCon 2024. The point is to give an update on every ship, since some haven't had a video made about them in years, and others, well, there isn't that much information on them, so we just want to be helpful in making decisions. Remember, digital ships aren't imaginary. Digital ships are imagine necessary. Every month we do a ship giveaway. The month's, this month's giveaway prize is yet to be announced, but it will be awesome. To enter, subscribe to the channel, like or dislike a video from this month, and leave a comment on a video from this month. For the full giveaway details, make sure you visit our Billionaire Ninjas Discord or our social media at Ninjas Leap. Now, back to our regularly scheduled programming. We are still at the Drake Manufacturer, and the next ship is the Drake Kraken. And it's one variant. We have the Kraken Base. 1650 standalone it was 1400 war bond and the same at concept the kraken privateer two thousand dollars standalone 1700 war bond and was the same at concept the kraken series is time limited for purchase and is also only sold in a limited quantity normally ranging from 100 to 500 available for each sale these ships are not available to rent in game as of 3.23.1a. For the sake of clarity and brevity, I will call each of these by their unique names. We'll call the Kraken Base, the Base, and the Kraken Privateer, the Privateer. The Kraken is a protector and a beacon of freedom in a too often cruel universe. For those tasked with safekeeping citizens unable to protect themselves, the Kraken is both a sanctuary and a self-contained war machine, ready to take on the most daunting adversaries. Drake has thrown out the rulebook to redefine private use capital class ships, attack carriers, and the very nature of personal freedom. It's nothing if not a testament to the empowerment of the people. The Kraken Privateer is intended to serve as a mobile marketplace or outpost. The ship can accommodate many ships and offer habitation for travelers that may want to stay a little longer. Let's get it cracking! For measurements, the base and privateer are both the same. Length 270 meters, beam 104 meters, height 64 meters. That means as far as in-game ships as of 3.23.1a and ships available as far as concepts, it is the fourth largest ship available to own in the game behind the Javelin, Hull E, and Orion. Now, we're not including the king ship and all of that stuff, so for you people in the comments, there you have it. For crew, <laughs> the Kraken series all have the same minimum crew which is 10 and maximum crew of 10 which you should expect to change because i think those numbers just haven't been completely figured out yet but i would guess that it would be somewhere closer to uh the 20s or 30s rather than 10s the base carries 3792 scu and the privateer has 768 scu but we'll put a little asterisk next to that and we'll talk about that later. But either way. Hey, get the hell out of here. Oh, that's a lot of potatoes. The speed and maneuverability of the Kraken are yet to be disclosed, but I expect it to be slightly less maneuverable than an Idris because of the size, but slightly more maneuverable than something like the Hull E, at least the Hull E while it's laden. For weapons, both the base and privateer come with no traditional weapons, not pilot controlled anyway. Instead, they have one size eight manned turret, they have four size six manned turrets, and four size five remote turrets, but they do not have missiles or torpedoes. For ship parts, the Krakens both have the same parts, the whole series has one large radar, six medium computers, two capital power plants, two capital coolers, two capital shield generators, four capital fuel intakes, two capital fuel tanks, a capital quantum drive, a capital jump module, and a capital quantum fuel tank. 
the hull HP for the base and the privateer are both unknown but I would expect it to be somewhere a bit less than the Idris, which is currently sitting at 22.5 million HP. My guess is both of the Kraken would be around 14 or 15 million HP. Considering the Idris is supposed to be one of the toughest ships in the game, and the Kraken is supposed to be substantially less sturdy, to use the exact words quoted in the Q&A. The Kraken shields are unknown, but if we can learn anything from the Idris shields, we're probably looking at something like quadrant shields with around 1 million HP, which is a little bit less than the Idris, I'd say close to half, and regenerating around 9,000 HP per second, which is a little bit closer to the max amount that is available from the Idris, maybe about 1,000 less HP per second. For quantum capability, we're doing something new now that we have this better sense of what travel looks like in the verse. We're going to rank quantum capability based on five standards, interstellar, solar, planetary, local, and no drive. Interstellar is from solar system to solar system, meaning you can travel anywhere in the system multiple times without refueling. Solar means you will be able to make one round trip from one end of the system to the other end, but you will need to refuel after that one trip. Planetary means you will be able to travel to another planet in the solar system one way, but you will need to refuel when you get there and you will not be able to make the return trip unless you do. Local means you can travel from moon to planet and planet to moon, but anything further will be extremely difficult without a refuel support ship or multiple stops. No drive means the ships are not capable of quantum travel. No worry, we will include a description on screen in every video so you know what we mean. The quantum capability of both the base and the privateer is interstellar. Some special features for these ships are, let's start with amenities, they both have. At least 10 beds, multiple bathrooms, full dining halls, multiple armor storage rooms, multiple rooms for weapon storage, a massive amount of personal storage for items, two internal size two hangers that can fit small ships, two size four landing pads and two size three landing pads and a medical bay, which is supposed to be lower level. So I'm guessing tier two beds instead of tier one, like on the Idris. Both ships will be able to repair, rearm, and refuel ships that land on their pads, and at least one dedicated internal garage. Both also have a cargo tram to physically move cargo around the ship. The base variant will have a dragonfly bay that can fit multiple dragonflies and a massive cargo hold fitting nearly 3,800 SU of cargo. The privateer drops its general cargo capacity down by almost 3,000 SU. Well, technically. Remember I said that asterisk earlier? So it can provide 10 shops so you can sell things. And each one of those shops has an additional 189 SU of storage. So if you look at all of that together and considering that there's 10 shops, that would be 2,658 SU of cargo when you add it all together, of course. But please check my math because we know both mine is shaky and even when I use a calculator, it's still shaky. Now it's time to rate this ship. A rating I rate from one to 10. My one is only by if you have a unique reason that is specific to you or because you like the looks of the ship. My 10 is if you have the money, this ship is almost guaranteed to be useful to you in the game. A one doesn't mean the ship is useless or ugly and a 10 doesn't mean that the ship is perfect. Just remember, this is just our rating. Please give us yours in the comments down below. We read all of them and take them to heart. I mean, we really let them sink into our souls and we'll use that hit to our souls to connect with you through the force. That's not how the force works. Oh really, you're cold? My rating for the ship is of course going to be handed out based on which variant we're looking at. The Kraken base is a 10 for its final score. And the Kraken privateer is a nine for its final score. Let's start with what I like about both of these ships. I mean, it's easier to talk about what I don't like, but this thing has just about everything that you could want in a ship. And if it doesn't have it, you could most likely land it on top of it. I can't think of a single gameplay loop that you wouldn't be able to attach to this. If you think of one, let me know, but my bet is you'll have to think pretty hard before you get an answer. That's to be expected in a capital ship and the second most expensive ship currently in the game. 
which is really the only reason the privateer gets a nine bit also because it loses a considerable amount of cargo space even when you include the shop storage it's still a 1100 short what i like about the base is it is a legit carrier you can land most medium ships and below on it with ease it's getting a medical bay it's the easiest mobile base of operations in the game even better than the idris to me because of the ships that can land on its surface less wasted internal space not to mention the dragonfly bay for people to store their bikes when they don't want to land and prefer to just hop out and fly to you. It has a ton of turrets for de defense and that size eight should be able to make an Idris think twice. Albeit if the Kraken, you know, is going to do that fight, it better have some heavy fighters some bombers, you know, just to make sure that you can uh, handle it when you go against that Idris. And also remember, if you're attacking with this thing, you need to have at least some crew to stay back and help repair, refuel, rearm, and to man those turrets so this thing isn't just a sitting duck. What I like about the Privateer is it's basically like owning a mobile space station. I can't really think of anything that a space station will have that a Privateer wouldn't be able to have. Outside of maybe personal hangars when those get into game. It will help people fulfill their dream of owning a small city. But in space. It's really the only upgrade from the Banu Merchantman, but from what I've seen, the Banu Merchantman can give this thing a run for its money. So the issues with all of these ships are that they are, of course, way too expensive. I think both ships should be the same price as the Idris. I like the original prices that they had, 1400 for the base and 1700 for the Privateer. I don't think that they've really earned a price increase, if you ask me, as we have almost no details on them outside of what we were promised that concept. And what we were promised isn't quite worth what they're currently selling. That being said, they're amazing ships, so it's hard to say that, but I have to be honest. The basis issues are not many. It's just gigantic. I wish it had a pilot controlled weapon or maybe a pilot controlled missile or torpedo type of bay. The privateers issues are it adds shops but loses cargo and the dragonfly bay if I'm not mistaken. So I'm not sure why it's $500 more. I have trouble justifying the $500 value over the base when I could just get a Banu Merchantman with a few CCU discounts for the same price and have a dedicated ship for that and still have a base however you lose the carrier aspect and that is the more important part of the kraken i just see that as the better option the base plus the banu merchantman but again the privateer is still solid so it's still hard to give it anything less than that than that nine so how would i fix these ships to make them more valuable uh i would give them either higher quality components so they should come with no less than b components b quality components all the way through or they should have vehicles included in their purchase price like the idris does why don't i get a free mule or free mpuv with these i mean that's what a hundred dollars worth of ships but still at least it comes with something the base specifically if i'm looking at how to fix these i would give it a size six dual weapon in the front controllable by the pilot of course and 12 size four missiles and 12 size six torpedoes, then that would make it perfect. Now, I wouldn't have all of that controllable by the pilot, but at the very least, I would have one of those controllable by the pilot. The privateer needs to come up in that cargo capacity per shop by about 61 each to give 250 per shop. That would make it at least worth a little bit more than the base. I would also add those same size six dual weapons to the front and the missiles or torpedoes or both actually, but I would drop them down to eight each instead of 12 each. So who are these ships for? Well, anyone who can afford to spend a month or maybe two months rent. I imagine using the base as the end game ship to end all end game ships. I would suggest this ship more than I would suggest the idris or the javelin to an orc just because i think this ship will be much easier to manage and defend because it can land on the surface of a planet well 
the Idris can land on the surface of a planet too. So I guess this is more aimed at the Javelin. If I'm using this primarily for combat purposes though, the, the Kraken at least, I should be stocking this thing with Furies and P-72s and the hangars, F-8s and F-7As on the small pads and two Redeemers on those large pads because you will need some help unless you came with other ships in your group. Regardless of how it's fitted, this ship should stay back and take pot shots with that size eight weapon, that size eight turret anyway, and I would keep it out of range just enough to where you could still use that size eight, but more so to act as a garage, rearm and refuel base for the ships it sends out. Considering that it could also be a base for pretty much any other operation. I think you can see a bunch of vultures on those pads and this being a forward salvage base, a few molds and prospectors and this being a forward mining base, a few Argo rafts for cargo, a few Apollos even to make it a mobile hospital. The uses are only limited on the base by what you can fit on its pads or in its hangars. Just know that that comes with added cost to an already crazy expensive ship and you'll still have to find or purchase crew or AI blades to run this massive, massive ship. I imagine using the privateer as the alternative to the BMM and a small step up because of the ability to land so many vehicles on the surface. But I really would treat this like a space station and park it right next to another space station and steal their business with slightly lower prices. I know you're here for our rating, but if you really want a ship, go buy it. We won't stop you. Or even better, all ships can be earned in game once the game releases and some you can purchase in game right now. These are just our ratings, but when you spend, it's your money. My opinion, the Kraken is for orgs or people who want to do more of a how to run a crew simulation rather than get directly into the action because make no mistake, you will need to spend a significant amount of time telling your crew what to do, whether they're human, they're AI, or they are NPCs. That being said, if you have the cash, it's a ship you won't regret purchasing based on what it can do in the game. But I can't promise you won't miss not paying your mortgage for a month. That's a different story. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for spending your time with us. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.